The backbone of every Muslim are the Kalima, the Quran, the five pillars of Islam, and the six pillars of faith. But for the Ahmadi Muslims, these are not enough to declare them Muslims. In 1975, the Slango State Religious Department declared them in a fatwa to be apostates. There is one glaring difference between Sunni Muslims and the Ahmadi Muslims. And that is, for the Ahmadis, after the Prophet Muhammad, there is one other Prophet. And that other Prophet was Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, born in the Punjab. This belief that there is another Prophet after Muhammad has brought upon the Ahmadis contempt. And this contempt has, in countries like Pakistan and Indonesia, translated into violent reprisals. Even though the Ahmadis say Mirza Ghulam Ahmad did not bring a new religion, what he did was to bring back the Quran to the people because he had felt that Muslims around the world were moving away from the Quran. And his attempt was to bring them back into the fold of Islam. We've interviewed Mr. Aino, who heads the Ahmadi movement here, called Jama'at Ahmadiyah Muslim Malaysia. And in this final episode of the series, we'll be talking to other Muslims to find out what exactly do they feel about the Ahmadis and where do they stand when it comes to the Ahmadi beliefs. Well, um, uh, we may differ in our understanding what Khadani is all about. But irrespective of that, whether we accept them as uh, part of Muslims or we accept them or we consider them to be apostates, um, they should be given their due rights. I mean, if we consider them part of Islam, for example, and the Muslims and uh, at large, then we have to give them um, their due rights um, as Muslims, and we have to respect their their way of uh, their way of life, and we have to respect the sanctity of their mosque, for example. However, on the other hand, if you were to uh, presume that they are apostates, or we accuse them as being apostates, then they have the right to live as a non-believer, same like Buddhist or or Taoist or Christians in this country. So why are we acting against them when we are not acting against the non-Muslims? Could it be because um, that uh, there are people who feel strongly that apostasy in Islam is not permitted? Yeah, I guess, I guess this is the, the crux of the, the problem is because the understanding about apostasy itself and about faith. Uh, as we know that uh, it is clear in the Quran stated that uh, it was stated that La um, there shall be no coercion in matters of faith. Um, Surah Al Baqarah verse two hundred and fifty six, the second chapter of verse two hundred and fifty six. And uh, based on that, it means that you cannot coerce people to embrace religion as much as you cannot prevent people from relieving a faith. A, a person does not have faith anymore. If not, that verse does not make any sense. You cannot say uh, there should not be co no coercion, meaning that it's a one-way valve. You cannot coerce people to embrace, but then you have the right to prevent people from leaving the faith. <laughs> so, you know, the terminology of freedom is not there. So, if you were to understand, and even uh, uh, modern, uh, well, I, I would say um, medieval, some uh, classic, classical ulama, for example, and more of them in modern era, like um, Dr. Taha Jabir Alawani, um, uh, this uh, uh, um, 
Dr. Yusuf Qardawi, Subahim Mahmas Sani and a few others um, they believe that you know if you were to leave uh, Islam uh, without how do I say without provoking it or where is no evidence of sedition or treason then you're allowed to leave it freely um, the issue is that the Muslim Muslims in Malaysia for example they believe that you know if you leave the religion and the you are supposed to be punished and they they tend to accept that the punishment should be by death penalty for example so this is i think is against the to me and to many others is against uh, the real tenets of of freedom of religion in our in our religion itself i'm not an expert in in Khadani, uh, but from what i understood especially from a uh, book by Muhammad Abu Zahra Imam Muhammad Abu Zahra um, he's a specialist in theology in Islamic theology so when mentioning about about Qadiani he specifically said that uh, you know as you, you pointed out correctly um, it was the belief that uh, Mirza Kulam Ahmad is the prophet is a prophet after prophet Muhammad so whether he Actually, um, because they believe the kalimat qatamun nabiyin, the end of the prophethood, uh, does not really mean the end, that Prophet Muhammad was the last prophet. So they believe that there could be other people who would come and revive the religion itself. And that was uh, Sheikh, uh, I mean, um, Mirza Kulam Ahmad Qadir. So uh, in that sense, I believe that many Muslims have um, kind of an understanding that uh, this is a heresy. So I will not go into detail on whether, um, you know, as I said previously, what is important is that to um, um, allow them to live and to believe in whatever they believe. And that's the most important thing, to respect human rights.